Mark, would you find our YouTube channel maybe and post that on Facebook and try to get people to go there? All right. So we are uh, almost live on Facebook, everybody. I need... Uh, hey, Mark, would you find our YouTube channel maybe and post that on Facebook and try to get people to go there? We're stuck in an infinite loop now, guys. We're never going to get out of it. Okay. Give me... Um, oh, Effie, I never, are you going to pitch Effie? Uh, you are going to pitch, but no video today. No problem. All right. This is the first time we've ever gone live on Facebook. So I'm excited about that. Um, so, or I mean, gone live on YouTube, not Facebook. So I'm excited about that. I'm going to get a cup of coffee real quick because that was frustrating. And then we're <laughs> going to get started. Okay. Someone sing a song or Okay, we're going to get started now. Sorry for the quick delay. Um, what I was going to say to you, Fonda, is that I saw your name on the mentor list for yeah. the one and all. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, I was happy to see that. Me too. That's super exciting. And do you get everything due? I think we had to make videos and everything and put those in. I did. I got everything into Anum. Is it Anum? Anum. Anum. I turned everything in. I think I had to do my video two or three times to get it right, but hopefully I did. All right. But what a great list of cohorts. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Mm hmm. Hey, uh, Mark, I just posted the live video in the 99 Problems event discussion. Um, and maybe you can scoop it from there and put it in a couple other spots. All right, we're looking good today. We've got five presenters. Um, our uh, broadcast is going to be a little weird, but that's okay. And I want to, you know, we, we start with a couple of things. So first, welcome to 99 Problems, but a pitch ain't one. You might notice we've got uh, in Mark's space, the 99 second counter. So we have uh, um, upped our game a little bit. It, we don't have to say 139 anymore. So I'm super happy about that. Uh, we also, uh, I wanna give congratulations to Steve first. So Steve Manning and uh, the Kuala Pantry won the hatching last night. So that is a, an alumni of 99 Problems, a fledgling. Uh, so we're super happy about that. But I also wanna give a shout out to Erica, who's on the screen, uh, coming to continue to refine everything, get her business right, and realizing that getting up on the stage and everything that you had to do to get to that point is really one of the uh, or the biggest benefit, more than the $2,000. And James is an alumni of the hatching. Marshall is, you pitched uh, mutual aid once with Scott, didn't you, Marshall? Yeah, that was like six, seven years ago. Uh, yeah, so that we were reminiscing at the beginning of the hatching last night. So, and then Alex, I don't remember if you guys ever pitched or not. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Actually, here, give me one second. All right. Um, we pitched um, not at a hatching, but as another, I forgot what it was, but we did pitch before. Like um, five to, by five or something? Yeah, yeah. We pitched to, we pitched to Leap. Okay. And then uh, Shana is also a graduate of, or a, an alumni of the hatching. Actually, I think Shana did it twice under two. Is that right, Shana? Yeah, I did it twice. Mm -hmm. And I got the glory both times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, and I think James got the glory vote too. And then Erica, you, uh, 
we don't do that anymore with the virtual events. So you, you probably haven't seen that before. And uh, I don't know if you guys got, if they did that back then, Marshall. Yeah, I think we got it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. A lot of, uh, a lot of hatching alumni. It, it's uh, cross pollinating, right? People that are doing 99 problems are starting to do the hatching. People that have done the hatching before are starting to do uh, 99 problems. So uh, Jeremy Hurt and Shana have joined since I asked uh, about the pitching. Shana, are you going to pitch? Not today. And Jeremy, are you going to pitch? Uh, I might as well. Awesome. Okay. So the uh, let's do our, uh, our two sponsors. We always have two sponsors. So first of all, we always mention Black Lives Matter. We are not going to allow it to come off from the feed. We are not going to stop using our voice to try to uh, signal boost it. Was that you that gave, used that phrase with me the other on my on Twitter, Marshall, a few days ago? Signal boost. Yeah. Uh, I'm. Uh, yeah, I can't remember. I don't know. I like that term though. Um, I want to make sure that we've got a platform here that gets watched and Black Lives Matter, um, enough is enough. All of this has to stop and we need to, we need to take systemic racism out of everything that we're doing. And that includes community development, economic development, and all of that. So just going to put out there again, uh, we had, we wrote defund the police and invest in black communities on the top of the fledge um, a month and a half ago, right, right after they tear gassed our kids. Um, I did the post yesterday about the hundred cities that tear gassed the, um, their people, if you will. So there were a hundred cities in the month of June, I think, or May and June, the end of May. And Lansing was one of them. I don't think it's one of our proudest moments to tear gas our kids. Six of those kids were from the fledge. So, and when I say kids, I'm talking 20 somethings, you know, that's not cool at all. Um, we were at a peaceful protest um, and the cops showed up for a riot. So the analogy again, we showed up for a friendly basketball game and they showed up with helmets and pads and cleats on. And if, I don't know. I don't. The, it's instigative. It's not cool. Um, it needs to stop. I don't like the way we're talking about this accreditation and this distraction and that distraction right now. Um, and the only thing that I I don't want to get super involved in the the political side of it because it's not political to me. It's a human rights issue to me. And the fledge will continue to not call the police unless it is our absolutely last resort. So, you know, property crimes, it's, they're not important enough to call a policeman that might kill somebody or hurt somebody. So, you know, we're gonna continue to do our part to defund the police by not using the police. Um, and we will resolve things because we have a strong community and our strong community will get us through. So. If we've got a mental illness problem, calling 911 could be very dangerous for that person. So we'll spend the time and try to walk them over to Sparrow um, and get them help without getting a gun involved. So we're gonna continue to do that. Um, and one of the things that we're shifting our message, uh, when you hear me say strong communities, that means a community that doesn't have to be policed all the time. We can handle our own problems. We are a strong community. You're also going to see me say on the, I'm writing a new kind of graffiti on the fledge that will say in dire need of creative extremist. And that is the end of a Martin Luther King quote, which it, the, the whole quote is, it's not a question as to whether you will be an extremist or not, or we will be extremists or not. It's what type of extremists we will, we will be. The world is in dire need of creative extremists. So I'm calling on all you creative extremists. Doesn't matter what you're being extreme about, but we need some radical change here. So 
that's going to lead me right into our our other sponsor, which is the Fledge.community. This is a place where we're trying to create a small marketplace for the, for the mid Michigan area. Uh, we've got potential use of a Fledge coin, which would be a crypto coin that we could use for bartering and you know the time tools and talent or the time bank stuff that we've always talked about, Marshall. There's some mutual aid work that can be done there. And I just want to put the fledge.community, our website and all of that back out into the universe and get us thinking about it again. Because again, strong communities don't need cops and strong communities don't need to buy every single thing off from Amazon. We don't need to be only producers and consumers. We're so much more than that. So let's make strong communities Let's take care of our own problems. Let's solve our problems in our unique ways with our the, the eliminating the unique causes we're presented with and using the resource that we have. We can't buy everything from San Francisco and Boston and all these other places. Let's make our stuff here. And by the way, while we're making it, we're having a hell of a lot of fun. So, right, Jeremy? It's fun to make stuff, to make music, to make poetry. Right, Marshall? It's fun to create our own power you see rex go off the grid yesterday stopped his meter that was awesome so all right now we're going to get into 99 problems james hayes is sitting there saying come on man i need this money <laughs> how you doing today james can you hear me i'm now? having a lot of really bad connection problems with the <clears throat> we can hear you well so when you're going, I think we're going to be okay. It maybe is just coming yeah, back on the audio. Yeah, I can't hear you at all now. So, you okay? All right. So I'm going to get started. Marshall, you're up first. Um, you've got 99 seconds. Can you see the timer in the corner there? Yeah, I got one down there. I got one up in my computer too. So, okay. all good. Thanks. Well, that's the official one. I'm just playing. <laughs> when you start talking, Mark's going to start that timer and you got 99 seconds to go. And then the next person's going to go. Then we'll ask questions at the end and then we will uh, vote. And whoever gets the most votes gets 99 bucks. All right, cool. Well, uh, thanks, Jerry. Thanks, uh, The Fledge. And yeah, thanks everyone for being here. Uh, so I'll get us started. Um, my name is Marshall Clubo. Uh, Lansing resident, live on the west side. I've lived on the east side. Uh, and what I'm here to launch today uh, is Michigan Mosaic Energy Cooperative. Uh, really, our intention is to build new economic systems uh, that enable and empower our members and communities uh, to benefit from our actions abundantly, equitably, distributing energy assets in all their forms through. Uh, so what this means to us, uh, energy is an encompassing word. Um, when I think of energy, I think of food and I think of electricity. Uh, so through this community organizing of a cooperative, we're looking to identify and measure community needs for food and electricity. Uh, the Fledge is leading the forefront on that. Secondly, uh, we're looking to map our community assets and times, tools and talents that are available locally. Lansing is a unique city. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to travel the country, uh, the US land, and I have friends across the country and I'm, Lansing has it all. Uh, we have all the pieces to make a pretty uh, unique economy. Uh, next, we're looking to model system level socioeconomic transformation on a bioregional basis. And so what that means, Michigan is a water world. If you break down Michigan further, we can break our communities down by our watersheds. We're able to organize that way outside of political boundaries based on what we are, water. Uh, next, we're looking to develop and create a local complementary currency. This is a coin that Jerry's talking about. Lastly, uh, hands-on energy infrastructures. So through the recycling of laptop batteries, we're able to change the world and power our own future. Thanks for the time. And uh, if I'm able to win the prize, I'll be spending it on uh, stickers and advertising material. All right. So one quick thing. Great job, Marshall. You're the first person to ever use the uh, 99 second timer. So uh, quite pleased with that. Uh, I forgot to hit the record button. So I've got it recorded on YouTube though. So that was, that was awesome, Marshall. Um, now, 
just got to figure out how long it's going to take Mark to reset to 99 seconds. And when Marshall is done, Figgins is up next. You okay with that? Yep. All right. Okay. Whenever you start talking, Mark will start the 99 seconds and we'll get going. Okay. I'm ready. Hi, I'm Figgins. I'm new to Lansing. I've been here about a year. Uh, and about six weeks ago, I set up a free stand at the Fledge and uh, it's made out of almost entirely out of pallets, uh, recycled pallets, the no contact covered wooden stand with coolers for donations and redistributions of food and non-food items. So in the past six weeks, we've gotten donations from neighbors, from farmers markets, from restaurants, from uh, recovery uh, organizations. And we've seen this incredible amount of food coming and going that's been serving our community and um, some that have been able to come in and, and utilize it as well. Uh, so right now I have three other locations that are interested in setting up pre stands. The cost is about $50 per stand if we can get donated coolers and ice packs. So with $99, I could set up two more free stands, uh, but I also really don't need the money. So I just wanted to present this to see, to, to get it out there uh, and find other people who'd be interested in helping out, getting it in their neighborhood. Uh, Cause we also have people willing to donate to the free stand like efforts. So uh, not, not really interested in winning anything. Um, I just want to say like, the United States is the global leader in food waste. <clears throat> and I've worked in the food industry for over 10 years from farms to grocery stores. And a lot of the food waste comes in our homes, our restaurants and our grocery stores. And this is something we can do to increase our food security. I'm done. All right, awesome Figgins, man. It, just the first two pitches, we're gonna solve a ton of problems with the people that hang around Lansing. You guys are awesome. So, all right, James had to drop out. So I'm got to switch or uh, uh, come down to you, Alex. Um, and Alex is doing something awesome. I know that. So when I, you know the rules by now. Hey, Alex, uh, can you hear yes. me? Yeah, okay. I can hear you. Sorry, my mic is muted. Sorry. No problem. Okay. All right. We're ready to go when you're ready to go. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Alex Malone. I'm a Lansing native, and uh, I am a nerd, and I'm huge into video games, which for somebody who like, looks like me, um, you don't really hear a lot of, but we are out there. Um, and I'm representing our company, Proven Esports Group. Um, and uh, we are a esports and gaming company. Um, we be, uh, Esports is a, almost a billion dollar industry right now. And um, the, the problem that we're looking to solve um, is there's kids out there that, you know, especially now because everybody's streaming, everybody's on YouTube, everybody's on Twitch, and they want to be what they see on TV. They want to be a ninja, which is a huge popular streamer. They want to be a gamer, right? But the problem is that they don't have a community to grow and to um, build that self-esteem to. So they get in front of these cameras and it's super toxic online. And so what we're doing and what we have been doing is we're creating events and creating spaces for gamers to come and to grow, to build self-confidence, um, to um, build their mindset, build their skill set. Um, and this is from all ages, all, all the way down from 10 years old, all the way down to 30. Um, and so what we're looking to do is provide an atmosphere and an environment where these kids can learn, uh, or these people, I should say, can learn how to uh, do esports broadcast, esports production here in Lansing um, and have opportunity at a really global market and to change their destiny. Because if I would have had access to a computer um, that was able to do the things that I can do now, um, my life would have been changed a lot sooner than what it has been. So we're looking for a space um, to help us house that in. All right, you good, Alex? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Great job. You're getting some applause across all the platforms. So uh, we'll come back to you with questions. For sure, uh, thank you. All right. So Effie, how are you doing? I know you said there was no video, but uh, hopefully you got audio. Hi, yeah, I have audio. Sorry, the um, computer I'm using today is the one that doesn't have video. The other one's not charged. <laughs> no problem at all. Um, you ready to go? Yes, I am. Okay, and you can uh, 
You can see the uh, 99 second timer? Yes, I can. Okay. All right. So whenever you would like to start. Um, yeah, just everyone out on YouTube, you're not going to be able to see Effie because she doesn't have a video on, uh, but you should be able to hear her. And if not, then breathe for 99 seconds. Meg's <laughs> out there. She'll lead you in it. Go ahead, yeah. Effie. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. My name is Effie Alifoje Carr. Um, I'm here because I created the conference for women that I wanted to see. I live here in East Lansing. I've been around for the last 15 years. I'm an MSU alum, but I'm actually a proud Detroit native. And I wanted to bring something to the Lansing area that would help me feel like women here who live in the urban areas have something that they can relate to. And so I created a conference that had tons of community giveaways that help and bless women, um, such as curvaceous lingerie, so that we could have things that we enjoy. Um, in addition, we did things like trap yoga and trap and paint, just so that we could have the type of culture that we don't really see as much and as often in the Lansing area. And so the point was to empower and encourage women who actually have forgotten in their day-to-day -day lives that they still deserve it all. And so the reason why I'm pitching today is because COVID-19 hit and I wasn't able to have my third annual conference. I purposely keep costs low. Um, I want it to be affordable. So I incur most of the costs myself or get sponsors. Because again, if this conference is for the women who forgot they deserve it all, chances are they might not have the finances to accommodate things that are gonna take care of them. So we do lots of self-care. There's dynamic and diverse speakers and stories. There's lots of fun and pampering. And I have to figure out a way to bring that to everyone virtually this year in 2020. So I'm here today to ask for your help and support in any way possible. If it's not financial, maybe we can partner. Maybe you have an idea. And to be honest with you, I have no idea how to host and accommodate a virtual platform. So hopefully you guys are willing to help Pretty Empowered with Effie LFOJ Carr. Thank you for your time. All right. Thank you very much, Effie. And uh, we're going to have to figure out a way for you to drop some, maybe not on uh, this platform, but if you could go over to Facebook and drop some of your links or something. Uh, I think there are a lot of people that would like to connect with you. And I'll be following up with you about the hatching. I saw that in the comments as well. So, all right. Now we are to Jeremy Hurt. You ready, Jeremy Hurt? I guess I have to be, huh? Yep. <laughs> I mean, we can BS for a little bit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's get it over with. All right, let's get it over with. <laughs> All right. Uh, my name is Jeremy Hurt. I, I've been in Lansing for about three years now. I um, helped uh, create and run the Artist Umbrella uh, for the first almost year of its existence. And I'm now uh, branching out on my own to try to figure out some new things to do. And one of the ideas that came to me was uh, a, a food delivery service for downtown Lansing. Um, I would be focusing on the Washington Square area from LCC down to uh, like uh, the bus station area, basically. Uh, and I started looking into it and it's, it's, it's something that's very feasible. It's, it's a very cheap uh, thing to start. Uh, basically, startup costs would be um, less than $1,000 uh, with, uh, with, with everything. I'm still waiting to hear on insurance how much that would be, uh, but I am looking into everything as far as permits and all that stuff goes. Uh, and it, it would be called uh, Red Bike Delivery uh, because I have a red bike. And uh, it also, when I think of red, I think of speed and, 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 you know, Superman and the flash and all that stuff. So to me, it makes, it makes some good, good brand identity and, uh, and stuff like that. Uh, and then uh, also, you know, it, when they see the red bike, they know it's time to eat. So um, my goal is to keep all the money in the community though, instead of giving it to these corporations that are charging restaurants 30% to uh, deliver their food when I can do it for half that price and faster so that's uh that's my goal awesome jeremy did someone say something or just me oh i see what it was it was me echoing back to myself um okay 
that is everybody I think who is going to pitch. We did have one person trying to get in that I lost. I was planning to pitch, Jerry. Did I not write you down? I don't think you did. You kind of skipped me in the um, order that we showed up. I'm so very sorry. It's okay. Are you ready now? I am extra ready now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead whenever you're ready. Okay. I'm Erica and I'm pitching an event. When September ends is a celebration of the pain and struggle that accompanies being homeless. We host this celebration to demonstrate directly to people that are struggling with homelessness that they are valued, loved, and celebrated by their community. In the past several years, this event has fostered genuine community by intentionally bringing together people from all walks of life and encouraging them to share authentically and vulnerably through art, music, and storytelling. Due to the pandemic, several changes have been made to the format. Instead of being open to the public, the event will be live streamed on Facebook. And instead of inviting all the guests at the City Rescue Mission, one family that has recently struggled with homelessness has been invited and will be honored with a very special VIP experience. You can contribute to the success of this event by donating gift cards or services that will be distributed directly to the family, or you can make a monetary donation to the City Rescue Mission of Lansing. You could also participate as a virtual vendor. My goal is to win 99 problems three times before then and use the money to pay for video production for our live stream. Summer has come and passed. The innocent can never last. Wake me up one September ends. Like my father's come to pass, seven years has gone so fast. Wake me up one September ends. Here comes the All right. Thank you, Erica. All right. James is back, popped back in and is on a laptop. So now James is going to come in and pitch. Good job, Erica. You okay, James? Yeah, I can't get my video to turn on. I'm having so many problems. That's all right. Just do it like this. Effie did it without uh, a video, too. Okay. So whenever you're ready to start, you can start. Okay, I'm sorry I missed everyone's pitch. Um, all right, so I'm pitching Art with Friends today and Art with Friends is a project I've been doing uh, in Lansing for about two years and we're, we're dedicated to getting art supplies to as many kids as possible. Um, so far we've done pop-up events and Art, free art supply distributions and we just recently wrapped up a contest which was really fun and I really loved seeing all of the kids art. Um, in the future I want to have uh, free classes in the summers especially when there's not much for kids to do. Uh, I just think art is really important for, for self-expression and I know it helped me recover from trauma and it's very hard to do art if you don't have art supplies. So that's one thing that I've been trying to address in the community. And also most recently I'm working on making activity packs and a YouTube video to show how to use the supplies in the activity packs and I'd use the money from the pitch to get more supplies and to cover shipping for sending out supplies and uh, I'm just planning a lot of more stuff to do. Uh, thank you that's all I have. All right good job James I'm glad you made it back in and uh, did Ooh. that pitch. Uh, I think that uh, you know, sometimes you hear the presentations, you Erica saying, you know, she wants to win it three times to pay for this video thing. 
And I always, you know, I cringe a little bit because it's only $99. You know, Steve won two grand last night. And, you know, I just have to remember that rivers are made by drops of water. And so 99 bucks, you know, it, it can be significant to people and it can uh, make a difference with what we're doing. So I'm glad all of you are out here uh, putting this, I, putting your ideas out in the universe. Seven great, or I'm sorry, eight, no, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven great ideas that are helping the community. Um, we usually go into a question and answer right now. And you can ask, remember, you can vote for yourself when the voting comes. You can ask whatever question you want. Um, and remember that we all love each other here. And we all want to move forward. And nobody really wins and nobody really loses. It's just one more step towards what we're trying to do. So anybody, including Megan Miller out there watching on YouTube, want to ask a question of anybody else? Um, yeah, I actually had a question for Erica. Um, how can um, we donate or, you know, is there a way to do that for the event? There is. If you want to donate money, there's a Facebook fundraiser up, which is pretty easy. And there's some other options if you're um, not into Facebook fundraisers. Okay. Uh, we can talk about that otherwise. Um, and if you want to donate anything as far as like a gift card to a restaurant or a service or a product, you can just give that to me and I will definitely make sure it gets to the family. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And Erica, would you mind putting that in the fledgling? Group? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I so can people, do that. That's yeah. easy. Yep. Um, um, anyone else want to ask a question? James, I would love to know more about the um, art supplies. If I had things like sidewalk chalk and boxes of crayons, would that be helpful? And then also, is it that you, um, do you do art projects with the children? So like, do you take used items or like old craft items or things that you can repurpose like beads or, you know, stuff like that? Or do you not need any of those things either? Um, chalk is good. It's, I, I do do in-person things, but I, I already have uh, an in-person kit pretty well set up and I, you know, haven't been able to do in-person things for a while. So I don't really need used art supplies right now. I'm mostly focusing on getting new high quality art supplies out. And uh, I saw a post from James the other day uh, trying to figure out how they're going to deliver like online art classes. So if anybody has any advice, and I, I did want to say, James, that I think Ryan Holmes is doing a pretty good job of doing Yeah, I talked online. to him. Okay, good, good. Yeah, I wanted to have Zoom classes initially, but you've noticed how many problems I've been having with Zoom. We might be able to help you, like, set you up in the studio downstairs and you could teach your class from there. Yeah, that might work better. We'll talk. We'll talk offline. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, oh, go ahead, Alex. Awesome. I'm sorry. Uh, just on uh, to the conversation with James. Um, uh, have you thought about live streaming it as well, like on Twitch or whatnot? And the reason why I'm, the reason why I'm asking that is because um, as you grow your platform on a platform like Twitch or whatever, um, you can uh, actually generate income from streaming. It's not a lot, but you know, as you grow and as you build a following, you'll be able to actually generate income um, from what you're doing, so you can pour back into your business. Just a just a thought. Okay. Yeah, I'll look into that. Thank you. Any other questions? I have a question for Alex. Um, Alex, in part of your presentation, you said, uh, you know, people who don't look like you, and I take that that you mean that, you know, like young black men mm -hmm. maybe don't do gaming in the same proportion that uh, white kids do or whatever. Yeah. Is that what, that's what you meant by that. Yeah, yeah, because the, the, the barrier for entry into to traditional esports is, you know, 1200 to freaking five thousand dollars to get a pc to play the games that these guys play um so me you know kids like me going to lansing school district didn't have access to that or don't have access to that um and so we wanted to provide a space that will have that equipment um right in the heart of downtown lansing um also looking at the washington square area um where they can come and learn these things now 
COVID has kind of switched our business model to online. So we'd be able to do online classes and whatnot. Um, and then of course, as measures, as we kind of come with our measures to provide a safe space um, that people, you know, um, from COVID to be able to actually come and learn and use equipment physically. Yeah, I, it's, it's so important. It's so very important to get that, uh, that equity restored or that equality given. Um, Absolutely. And Alex said he was a nerd. You ought to see some of these guys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they got hoods on. They won't talk to anybody. They, nope, they won't talk. They just want to come play the game. But once again, that in, and I don't want to take too much time, but but that's where my heart comes from because, you know, I want, you know, and this is for anybody. It doesn't just, you don't have to be black, right? But I want them to have a safe space to be able to be themselves and to feel confident when it's time to talk if they're not being judged. Oh, you play games? Yes, I do. <laughs> so that's kind of the heart for us here. All right. I'm going to launch the poll unless somebody else has a question. Really quick, Figgins. Um... I, I, so I'm looking at the site. These are the materials that we need to buy to create one of these. Uh, the, most is it is recycled pallets, but it's, yeah, it's kind of uh, all the materials, all the tools, but uh, we have the ability to source most of them. If you contact uh, me and I've got a Facebook page, I can send you the information. It's just Lansing area uh, free stands. Um, and so if, if you're interested in getting it in, in your neighborhood, we can work together to get everything that's needed and to build a like a volunteer working group so that you have stewards, you have volunteers helping you source stuff. Okay, yes, I'm very interested in doing that here in East Lansing. And then my last question, sorry, Jerry, to take up the time. Um, I'm just, so I'm trying to figure out, um, so I, I often uh, drive around and put the food in the, the um, so you know, like the little free libraries, there's the food version of that, right? but I'm always concerned about its perishability because like if it's 90 degrees out and I'm putting cans in there. So I just, what are your thoughts on that? I saw that you had a cooler, but that wouldn't be for canned food. So I'm just curious about like, you know, the safety of it, I guess. Yes, absolutely. And this is something Jerry and I were also concerned about and did some research on uh, above 95 degrees. The, you don't really want to have canned goods out. Uh, it can de cause degrading spoilage. Um, so that's why it's important to have volunteers who live in the neighborhood um, who can monitor those conditions and make adjustments. Okay, that is very helpful. Thank you very much. No problem. Figgins puts a lot of energy into that project every day. And I, don't, I wouldn't say a lot, like it's a 12 hour job, but every single day Figgins is very disciplined at changing out ice and making sure it's in good shape and uh, such an asset. I mean, it's so gorgeous aesthetically. It just matches the fledge. It, it's like, I can't remember it never being there. It's like, it's always been a piece of this building. Um, but what Figgins does for the neighborhood to keep that food moving is just, I can't thank them enough. Uh, so Jerry, you're too kind, but it's really only like a half an hour a day. And if you have a good working group, you can split that work among yourselves. Yeah, I know. I know. But it, it happens and you make it happen and we really appreciate it. So I'm going to launch the poll now. Um, out in YouTube, I've got uh, one person that I think is going to vote. There's several people, five people watching right now. I don't know if they'll vote or not, but hopefully. Um, and then uh, need you guys all to vote. And once all of the votes are in, I will show the poll and then tell you what I got out, got out on YouTube. And we will go from there. Um, while you guys are voting, and I've got one more vote, see how this, our pie is really big, right? It's not, we're not fighting over, you know, a really small pie where we've got abundance. We've got a lot of problems to us to solve. We've got a lot of collaboration. I like how you guys aren't, you know, tearing each other down um, during this process right? You're building each other up. You're not asking questions. Well, how are you going to do that? Or you're not going to be able to afford that. It's more like, how can I get engaged? How can I improve? What, what about this? And I just love that about this particular pitch competition and this particular 
uh, community. All right, I've got 10 to 10 votes out on uh, YouTube. I got one vote for James. So James is, is going to get uh, um, one more vote here. So when I share the results, I think you guys, can you see them? Yeah. Yep. So Erica, you had four votes. James, if we add one on to you, you're at two votes. Um, so we are with Erica today. Um, remember, who should get the $99 is the question, not who had the best pitch or who's going to save the world or anything like that. So it's a holistic view of moving our projects along. So anything you want to say, Erica? Thanks, guys. I appreciate it a lot. Congratulations. I'm glad. Hey, congratulations. That's awesome. Congratulations. Congratulations. Hey, Erica, congrats. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Erica. I like yeah. the uh, so one okay. September end rendition too. That was nice. Yeah. yeah. All right. So the other things though, uh, you know, I talked to Erica and James and Figgins and Shana um, a lot. I want to make sure, Marshall, let's engage. Let's get some more collaboration going um, and and get something going because I love what you're saying there. Um, Alex, how can we help? You know, I love you guys. Uh, um, I think the biggest thing um, for us right now um, is just uh, awareness of what we're doing. I mean, the more people know that what we're doing um, really goes a long way um, to touch more lives because we've been doing, we run an events. Um, and once again, like I said, we shift to online because of COVID and we're still touching folks. We have, um, because of our online events and streaming, we've been able to touch people as far as the UK. So, um, but we want to impact more in our city first, right? We want to build our roots here for sure. So. Um, it, it is amazing to me, the reach that you have so quickly, you know, the, I mean, even, uh, a lot of the events and a lot of things, we don't get that Detroit and that Grand Rapids pull, but yeah. your events immediately got that Detroit and Grand Rapids pull. So your ability to geographically reach out and pull people towards Lansing or pull attention towards Lansing. Yep. Yeah. Very good for us, Alex. So yeah, that's, that's definitely the heart, man. Cause you know, growing up, I always heard in Lansing, there's nothing good in Lansing. That's a freaking lie. So, um, right. Yeah, we're not, rock, we're not going to rock with that. <laughs> we're going to change what that. Marshall was saying, too, we do have a very unique city here. Um, we're, we're positioned in the future. I don't like using the term OPEC, but I will. We're the OPEC of water. We are sitting in the middle mm -hmm. of the most important reserve of fresh water in the world. And, you know, there's a lot there. We're super diverse. We've got history and manufacturing and building we've got these weird you know political histories but this is a cool city i've Absolutely. you know marshall's been a lot of places i've been a lot of places um i keep coming back here uh because i really i think it's the place to be right now it's cheap mm -hmm. to live here yep. um there's a lot going on and uh got all you cool people solving all these <laughs> problems so uh, Fonda, were you going to say something? Um, no, but I would say to Alex and, and, and several of the people, I don't know if you're familiar with the village or Michael Lynn, um, and he's out on the south end of town in the Kroger's Plaza on MLK and Holmes, I believe. But like Alex, I could see your program being super popular with some of the kids there that you know, we want to keep them off the streets and into some good things. And as uh, John Lewis would say, get into some good trouble. Yeah, and I think absolutely. that gaming is just way cool. So, and I think a lot of the ideas that are shared here, um, keep in mind some of these groups that are really trying to do something to make the South side of Lansing a better place. And we're, uh, we're super supportive of the village too. Uh, we love Erica and Michael and what they're doing. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I agree. I think we should make that connection. Do you want to do that, Fonda? Or do you want me to do that? Or do you want to do it yourself, Alex? Um, uh, yeah, I'm open to, I just need Alex's information. Or if you look on Facebook, America, without the A, America 20 to Life, or Michael Lynn, mm -hmm. Jr., 
he's on Facebook. Okay. Or I don't know if they have a village page. Do you, do. Jerry? Yeah, they yeah. do have a village page too. So way I'm cool the, people. Yeah, I'll make a connection for you, Alex. Okay. Too. Thank um, you. But Thank this you. will all happen naturally. So right. Good catch, Fonda. And I think even with Marshall too, you know, getting kids engaged in energy and being self-sustaining. And as I said, all of you, uh, the, the gentleman with, I've forgotten your name, with the bike, I love the bike idea too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think the food is delivered whenever I travel and I'm in New York or Chicago or whatever, at, or LA, they deliver on a bike. My food is hot and it's there quickly. So great. Oh. all of you have just amazing, amazing business ideas. Proud of everybody on here today. I love Jeremy's idea because it keeps the one thing he said that really strikes with me is that it keeps that money in Lansing right. and we're not sending that restaurant's money to San Francisco or wherever Uber Correct. and Altima. So I, I really like the idea. I really want to see you pitch this at the hatching, Jeremy. Yeah. And I think like jumping on that red bike idea, I mean, let's make it e-bikes, man. I have an e-bike and it's changed my life. It's cool. And we can set up charging stations around town. So, you know, it's, let's link. Yeah, absolutely. That's, uh, that's the goal is to expand to uh, better modes of transportation or different modes of transportation to expand the, the business a little bit. Because with just the bikes, obviously, you know, yeah, you can't go too far because the food's got to stay hot. And um, my, my mission is to get it there faster than Grubhub or anybody else would so I can be faster and cheaper. Um, and I know that, uh, you know, there's a, his name's Phil Dumontet. He started uh, Dash with a bike and a, and a, and a uh, Tupperware. So, and he just sold it to Grubhub. It had 7.5 million in revenue last year. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's possible and it's needed. And especially in cities like Lansing, you know? So I think, it, I think it'll be something that could be really successful. I have a question. Jeremy, is there like anything that we can do to help you get further with that process or? Um, right now I'm kind of in a waiting, uh, holding pattern, I would say, uh, because of, I'm waiting on uh, the insurance agent to get back with me to see how much that's gonna cost. And then, uh, then it's just about, um, you know, covering those few basic things and then I'm ready to go. So uh, yeah, it's, it's just a monetary, uh, uh, issue but like I said it'll be it'll be a small startup fee at least so that's 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 a positive okay I need uh three chicken swarmas from Jerusalem <laughs> hey, <laughs> huh? hey. I, well I already got uh, um, uh Goodfellas bagels and QP on board so I already got two restaurants so Ooh. yeah that's awesome. Keep it going. <laughs> yep. All right. This is a good one. Good job, guys. Everyone happy? Yeah, yep. absolutely. Yeah. All right. Anything else? All right. Then uh, keep making our community strong. Keep solving these problems. And can't wait to see you guys next. Next 99 Problems is a week from Sunday. So we are alternating Friday and Sunday. Um, and the next hatching is September 10th. So the hatching.org, if you want to register for that, that's for the $2,000 um, or keep getting your drops of water at the 99 problems, but a pitch ain't one. But I think you'll all agree. It's this conversation. It's these questions. It's this uh, dialogue that makes this uh, competition strong, not the $99. Though it helps, doesn't Absolutely. it, Erica? Yeah. It does help, yes. All right. Thanks again. I love you all. You hey. guys are great. You too. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, so much, Thank you Jerry. Jerry. Thank Seriously. You, Have Fun. a good day. Good weekend. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye, Bye everyone. Great job today. Nice to meet you guys. You as well. <clears throat>